Welcome to How to Get Fit Dancing. My name is Jodie Bunting and this is our podcast with my special guest, Jeanette Brooks, who's a dance professional and the owner of GB Dance. Hi, Jeanette. Hi, how are you doing? Should we be doing jazz hands right now when I introduce you? We absolutely you? need to be doing jazz hands. Jazz hands are an absolute <laughs> essential. <laughs> Now, you are from here in the East Midlands. You live in Leicester and work there. Uh, but you're originally from Aberystwyth, aren't you? That's right. Yes, I was brought up in Aberystwyth. Um, my dad was a Woolworths store manager. He was um, a manager of Woolworths in Aberystwyth. And um, yeah, it was lovely. We lived in a village just outside um, Aberystwyth. And it was so nice because you've got the countryside, you've got the sea. And that's really where my love for dancing began. Oh. Romant I can just see you dancing in the stars in the moonlight now right the sea. <laughs> I have occasionally danced down the promenade in Aberystwyth, I mean... let me tell you. <laughs> so and what, at what the nightclub you... at the end of the pier. <laughs> oh is it? Oh no, I didn't go there when I've been on holiday. <laughs> um what brought you to the East Midlands? So I when I was eighteen, um I've always loved dancing. Um and um I wanted to be a dance teacher. I, I didn't really ever want to perform. I always wanted to be a teacher. Um, so at the time there was an excellent college um, called the London College of Dance and Drama, and that was in Bedford. So I left um, Aberystwyth when I was 18 to go to college and study to be a dance teacher in Bedford. And from Bedford, I moved to Northampton, then I moved to Oxford, and then I arrived in Leicester. Which is why you have perfect elocution then, because you've kind of gone around the UK, filtered all the bad bits and got this perfect elocution, haven't you? <laughs> Lots of people, when I, when I hear a Welsh accent, I say, oh, where are you from? And then I tell them I'm from Aberystwyth. And the first thing usually they say to me is, but you don't sound well. <laughs> <laughs> But that's because I've lived in lots of different places, I think. When it's I go home... Com- it's a big compliment though, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Right, so I know you through something called Ultra Ballroom, which I'm currently doing now. I'm on week, I'm just finishing week number six. I've got two weeks left to go. Uh, and you were there on the first couple of weeks. So thank you for all your support, first of all. Um, so this week, I really wanted to give you the grilling. How did you get into dance? So in dance in as a whole, I was taken, my mum took me. So um, she took me when I was two years old. And I remember, I have a real memory. So there was a dance um, school in Aberystwyth that was had their classes and in the tennis pavilion. That's what I remember. And I remember going in and I was so scared that I wouldn't go to the bar. So, and I don't mean the drinking bar, obviously. Yeah. I mean the ballet bar. The holding bar. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I was so scared. I didn't. I, I didn't want to go to it. So the pianist said to me, "Don't worry. Hold on to the side of the piano." And I remember the first few lessons. All I would. All I would do is stand holding the piano. Um, but obviously, I got more confident. <laughs> and um, yeah, my love of ballet started there. And then eventually, I did modern and tap. And then yeah, and I always wanted to be a teacher. I think I was inspired by my teachers um, and saw what joy dance could bring. And that's why I wanted to be a teacher. So, so from how, there, how did on, that sorry. progress into ultra? So, yeah, so from there, I was teaching dance and um, I'd also um, shared my story um, of my, I had had a cancer diagnosis in 2007. I shared that story with Cancer Research. So I had a connection with supporting Cancer Research UK and um, someone in that, a lady called Katie Martin, was organising the Race for Life. Um, and I took part in the Race for Life and shared my story at the beginning of the Race for Life. And um, Katie now works alongside Ultra Ballroom um, because they raise money for Cancer Research UK um, as an event, um, as an events company. Um, Ultra Events have raised twenty-eight million pounds for Cancer Research UK. Amazing, isn't which it? is incredible, incredible yeah. through things like Ultra White Collar Boxing, Ultra Ballroom, Ultra MMA, Ultra Comedy. So I had that connection with Katie, and when they introduced Ultra Ballroom, she got in touch with me. Um, 
and said, would you come and teach for Ultra Ballroom? I was like, yes. So it combined two of my two things that I'm most passionate passionate about, which is my dance teaching um, and wanting to support Cancer Research UK. So it was like a match made in heaven, really. Um, so yes, I started in 2017 um, and um, trained the event in Leicester. Um, then in 2018, 18, I also trained the event in Chesterfield as well as Leicester. Um, and then continued up until it stopped before lockdown. And um, I was just going to say, you're now doing the whole world, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. I bet actually... it feels like it. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you, it feels like it. Um, now I am looking after. So I'm now an area representative, not just a trainer. And yeah. I don't say just a trainer because the trainers have a big job. Yeah. So I'm training the Leicester group, but I'm also the area representative for Leicester, for Birmingham, for Derby and for Nottingham. Oh, exciting. I know. And as you were telling me that story, I could just see how it naturally came together. You know, your link with uh, your, your past dancing and then with yeah. Cancer Research UK. And yeah. obviously with Ultra, it all just brought it together, which is so yeah. great. Yeah, it's incredible. And, you know, like I say, it's, it's ticking both of those boxes for me, the dance teaching and the supporting Cancer Research UK. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Now, I am doing a podcast with Katie from Cancer Research UK oh, in the future. But why do you think the public just love Cancer Research UK as a charity? Because it's the one one cause that everybody will donate to. Why do you think yeah. that? Is? I, I think it's because you can't find anyone that hasn't in some way been touched by um, a cancer story. You know, whether yeah. it's their personal diagnosis whether it's a relative um you know th there's all of those things that connect people to this charity and because it's a disease where you know we're much better at finding it now and much better at the, the diagnosis um so it seems like it's more but we are much better at doing that than we were before um but I think it just is something that touches people's hearts. You know, yeah. we've all been affected in some way, you know, or we know someone that's been affected. So you mentioned earlier about your personal story with cancer. Would you mind sharing that? No, that's fine. Um, I think it's really important. Um, when I had my diagnosis, and I'll talk about that in a moment, I very much felt like I needed to do something after that to make a difference um, and that was really important to me so sharing my story I always say to myself you know if one person hears my story and maybe goes to the doctor earlier um, then what I've been through um, which is not as much as other people um, has been worthwhile yeah so yes in 2007 um, I, I didn't really have any symptoms, but I didn't feel quite right. And I felt as if there was something restricting in my stomach. Um, so I made an appointment to see the doctor, um, went to see the doctor. She examined me and she told me that she could feel um, a mass in my abdomen. So of course, you know, when you hear, hear the word mass, I mean, you know, I said, yeah. I remember saying to her, what, what, what do you mean by a mass? And she said, well, it could be a tumour. And I remember at that moment, I remember that very, very second that she said it. The first thing I thought about was my daughter. I just thought, Lily, yeah. it, you know, am I going to be here to see Lily? Um, you know, and at that, that point, I didn't know it was, you know, whether it was a tumour or not. So the GP was amazing. I'd gone sort of quite early um, she booked me in for a test referred me to the hospital I had scans within two weeks everything had had happened um, and the surgeon spoke to me it, they still weren't sure whether it was going to be cancer or not um, they, they said it's a mass it's on your ovary yeah and then I had to make the very difficult choice about the treatment that I was going to have in terms of um, surgery so there was a choice between just having one ovary remo removed or having a full hysterectomy. Um, 
which obviously would mean that I couldn't have any more children. We had Lily, who was five at the time. She was healthy. Um, you know, we weren't even sure whether we would have had another child. Um, so there was a lot of um, angst over making that yeah. decision because also, you know, the other thing to think about was um, if I had a full hysterectomy and then they sent everything off for testing and the histology came back and told me actually it wasn't cancer. Yeah. Then I was in that position of having made that huge choice and maybe not necessarily having to. So in the end, I opted for that choice. I, you know, they talked about if, if it had been, if you just had your ovary taken out, then you might, you'd have to go back and have another operation if it was cancer. You know, there was all of this going on, but at the same time, you know, no one's saying it is cancer because they didn't know. Yeah. So I had my operation and um, the day after my operation, the surgeon walked in um, with the nurse who was a gynae oncology nurse. And they walked in and as soon as they walked in and walked up to the bed, I knew, they said, oh, we just need to talk to you. We need to talk to you in a side room. So yes, they told me then that I had had stage one ovarian cancer. Yeah. So incredibly fortunate because ovarian cancer is usually found at the very latest stages. It's usually found um, at stage four when really there's not a great deal that they can do. Yeah. Um, it has a high mortality rate. Um, and this was found at the very first stage where it was contained within my ovary. Um, and it had been removed. So it was it was also kind of a strange feeling of you've had cancer, even though I didn't know I'd had Amazing. cancer. You yeah. almost had it and t had it taken away in a second. Yes, yeah. So it was a lot of... Um, you know, mentally, it was quite um, a difficult thing to process, but also physically, you know, it's, yeah. it's a major operation. Um, I was 40 at the time. Um, but yeah, incredibly lucky. I didn't have to have any other treatment. I didn't have chemotherapy or radiotherapy because they'd removed everything and they were sure right. that they'd done that. I had five years of checkups after that um, and then was given the all clear five years afterwards, which was incredible, incredible. But um, along the way, um, so in 2011, that's 2007, 2011, my mum was diagnosed with a, um, with a inoperable and untreatable brain tumour. Yeah. And she um, was taken to hospital, she'd fallen, and couldn't get up, she was taken to hospital. They diagnosed her and um, within 32 days of her going into hospital, she died. Oh, so, um, and it, it's it's really strange. I, it, from day one of me going to the doctor to the day they told me I had cancer was 33 days. Yeah. From the day that my mum went into hospital to the day that she died was 32 days. You know, so in a month, what can change in a month? Yeah. Your whole life can change in a month. Um, so I'm really, really passionate about sharing information, sharing my story, talking about my mum and um, supporting Cancer Research UK in any way that I can. And how was your mum to do with dance? I'm guessing, because she, she pushed oh, you into it, I'm guessing she loved it, did she? She, sometimes I thought she loved it more than me. <laughs> Is that possible? Yeah, she loved it. You know, she was from um, sort of post-war when there wasn't a lot of money and, you know, she always said to me, I always wanted to dance. She did go to tap classes. I remember her telling me she went to a tap class and she did um, an exam, she told me, and she did a tap dance to Blue Skies. Oh, <laughs> And, um, yeah, she was, she loved it. She she made my costumes when I was, you know, when I did ballet when I was younger. She helped out at the dancing school. Um, and then in later years, she loved Strictly. She absolutely loved it. We'd phone each other at the end of Strictly um, and, and talk about the dancers and the dancing and, and everything. And yeah, she was so passionate. And she went out to work full time to pay for my tuition fees and my accommodation when I went to college because we 
because it was a teaching college, we didn't get any kind of bursary or grant or anything. Yeah. Um, at the time, they only gave that to if you were going to somewhere like the Royal Ballet, for example. Um, and she went out and she worked, and every month she sent me the money to pay for my fees and everything. So, you know, I owe her a lot. And I, yeah. she didn't know about Ultra. Ultra happened after she died, you know. And every time I go to an event, every time I watch people dance, I think of her. Yeah, she'd be just so proud. She'd be just loving the work that you're doing. And the fact that you bring in so much joy through dance as well and obviously raising the money for charity. So Thank I you. understand now. It all fits together why, why, exactly why you do what you do. Yes. Why you put yourself through the stress of it all, <laughs> Jeanette. <laughs> Don't. Sometimes I question myself on that, let me tell you. <laughs> But it's always all right on the night. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's all about, isn't it? As long as it's okay, as long as the show continues, that's okay. Definitely, definitely. So when you were going through your um, issues, yeah. when how did it affect kind of work and your personal dancing? Did you have a long time where you weren't dancing or working? So at that time, I had actually had to take a break from teaching. So I was working in retail. So I actually then wasn't working at all. So, um, yeah. you know, in some ways that was fortunate, I think, because I wasn't, you know, there wasn't the strain of thinking I've got to get back to fitness, I've got to get back to fitness. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that was that was okay, actually, at the time. Physically, it was really difficult, you know, just going through that surgery and mentally really hard getting my head around the cancer diagnosis, but also, you know, the fact that I would never have a child, another child. Um, you know, it, it was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah. I just find it so interesting because, you know, through instances like cancer and any sort of illness, people do kind of hit the rocks, you know, mentally, physically, they go down. But then it's something like Ultra that can bring these people back up and flourish. Totally. And I'm, I'm a real believer. You know, my personal belief is about things happen at the right time. And... Okay. Um, the break I'd had from teaching at that point, then the year after my mum passed away, um, I was offered this job, teach, not ultra, offered a job teaching at a local dance school. When at a point when actually I thought maybe I was never gonna get back to it. So yeah. it was like a gift and it was almost like I wanted to say, there you go mum. All of that was worth, you know, it was worth all of that hard work and all of that, everything. I'm now back doing exactly what I love to do so that happened and then ultra happened so it was like the next stage yeah so and it was at the right time that's the thing it, the timing was great so what's your expert dance what are you, what's your love in dance because i know there's lots of different types and styles and stuff isn't there yeah i think you know ballet was my first love um, it was the first thing that I, that I did. Um, I love it. I really, really love it. Um, ballet has so many benefits, and you know, I know we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. But you know, the, the benefits of ballet are just incredible. But the grace, the beauty, the music, I, I love. But then on the flip side, I love the ballroom styles. I love waltz. It's so romantic. It's yeah. so graceful and elegant. And then a good old jive. Love a jive. <laughs> so I know why my event, we've got the American Smooth and the Jive, because they you love those two then. Yes. Yeah, it's absolutely nothing to do with me. <laughs> yes, it is. So talking strictly a minute, I know yes. this wasn't on the script, but I feel like I need to ask you, oh, yes. who's your favourite judge? Who's your favourite dance professional? Oh, favourite judge. Okay, you're going to be shocked. Okay. I love Craig. Oh, I know, Nicole. I know. Who knew that I would love Craig? I love Craig, do you know why? Because I agree with him most of the time. I know he's a bit <laughs> grumpy, but I I absolutely agree with what he says. You know, I'm like, I'll yeah. say something and then he'll say it. I'm like, yeah, you see, you see, that's what I said, that's what I said. <laughs> but you know, I think also, I love the fact that Anton's doing it now. I think yeah. he's great. I think actually the balance of the three judges now 
it's really good you've got Shirley who is so professional and such an expert in ballroom you know the queen of ballroom um, yeah. and Latin um, and then you've got Craig for the theatrical and for the drama and all of that and then you've got Anton again sort of a ballroom expert but also with that 100% understanding of exactly what they're going through yeah. and that's what I love yeah. he knows the process he knows how they're feeling so yeah love but it so from my say, from my very short-lived dancing experience yeah. i'm starting to see why you like craig though because as a dancer <laughs> you don't want to be patted on the back you actually want to be told what to do next don't you what to improve on so i understand why now. yeah yeah i can be a bit of a craig <laughs> we need you though i need you right now yeah <laughs> Come on, do it again <laughs> and, and do it better. <laughs> professional dancer, do you have a favourite? Well, the dream <laughs> would be Geo. <laughs> oh. Ah, you know, and not so much, you know, not because he's absolutely gorgeous, although <laughs> that's quite nice. Um, <laughs> you know, last year, no, not last year, the one before, the one before yeah. where he danced with Rose. Yes. I think that, that series of Strictly, was the most special one because you had Gio and Rose together and they were breaking ground there which was incredible um you know I saw he seemed to change he was very soft he was very gentle he was so caring and supportive you know it was like a different you know he wasn't the you know the handsome suave Italian he was the caring supportive man which was really beautiful there was that there was um john and johannes who just broke ground with their beautiful relationship their beautiful dancing and then you've got i've forgotten her name who hurt her leg and couldn't do oh i've forgotten her name completely yeah she I was know amazing you know. yes but she also showed and i loved her because she was so honest and you know, she was saying, I'm absolutely, you know, it's fine, I did really well, I got to hear, but yes, I'm absolutely gutted. Yeah. You know, and she was very honest about behaving well when circumstances go very badly wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it was really special. But yes. Yeah. And I think this is why people love Strictly, because it is real life, you know, they're so honest. That, to be honest, they can't not be honest because you see yes. the good, the bad, the ugly, don't you? All of it, all of it, yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, you get you get very invested in it. And I think that's the thing, you know, it's not just about the dancing, it's about the people, how they come across, what they do, you know, it's, it's, it's really special and it's good old Saturday night entertainment. Yeah. You know, the minute it starts, that's it. I'm not going anywhere on a Saturday night <laughs> until Christmas. <laughs> Love it. Right, so let's start talking then about dancing. Does yes. it get you fit, yes or no? Uh, yes. <laughs> and how? Why? Um, yeah, it depends on what you do. I mean, there are so many options out there in terms of dancing. It's good cardio. It's great to get the heart pumping. Um, it's great for strengthening. It's great yeah. for balance. It's great for posture. Um, but not only that, it is great for socialization as well. And, you know, community spirit in, in a group. Um, it's, for me, it's that ideal form of exercise. But I also, I know you have to find the thing that you love. And if you love dance, if you find that you, you love dance, it is, you, you don't even feel like you're exercising because you're having so much fun. Yeah. I remember Angela Rippon did a show on the BBC a few years ago. And they basically tested all different um, types of exercise, like walking, <laughs> gym, classes, dancing. <laughs> and dancing won because mentally and physically, the people lost weight or got fitter, but then also mentally got a community connection and just their lives turned around more with dancing than any other exercise. Do you agree? And why do you think it won? Absolutely agree. Yes, good old Angela Rippon. We'll talk about her again in a moment. Um, yes, because it releases those feel-good endorphins. You know, yeah. it's um, 
it requires concentration because you need to follow steps and learn steps um, and follow the teacher. It also requires sometimes for you to work in partners. So that's that socialization and working with someone else um, or as a group. So that's that coordination of movement and and um, appreciation of you know space and so on and movement. Um, and then also the physical ben benefits, as I said, you know, the, the balance, the, the strengthening of muscles and, you know, the, the benefits of dance are huge. They really, really are. Because even posture, I've learned, I am using my core constantly just by holding my arms up, which Joe keeps shouting at me for. <laughs> I love that. Your posture certainly has improved. <laughs> and so yeah, it's a core workout. <laughs> And it's really important, you know, I work a lot now with um, adults um, and a lot of over 55s and the strength in your core and that posture is incredibly important. You know, a lot of the things that happen when you get older are things like falls and that happens because you are less stable because your muscles become less strong. So for example, your muscles around your knees um, weaken if you don't strengthen them. And then of course your knees become unstable and that is really what you're balancing and is all about. Um, so dancing strengthens those muscles and also because you become more confident in your core and your posture, your eye line tends to be lifted. So that allows you to you know, walk better and also avoid falls and things like that so yeah i am a passionate advocate of those things and even you know it's down to weight bearing exercises as well when you're older and just to physically put your body weight on your limbs and move it's it's just a, a, a you know technically it's working every muscle in your body isn't it it absolutely is, yes. And I do something called, um, I teach something called the Silver Swans. I'm a Silver Swans licensee. This is something that was developed by the Royal Academy of Dancing. It's a ballet class for designed for over 55s. It's open to anybody, but it's designed specifically for over 55s. And actually, Angela Rippon is a um, spearheads that as well. Wow. Um, and um, I see it all the time in these classes, you know, I see older people, you know, I've got a, a class that I teach at Age UK in Leicester and um, I've got a lady that's 89, she wow. comes, she loves it and I had no idea she was that age until she told me and I still can't quite believe it. Um, but you know, they're, they're, they're all sort of in their 70s, their 80s um, and they just are incredible incredible you know and i i can see the change in their posture i can see the difference in the way they walk i yeah. can see how they work together and you know i think it's really important as well jody that whatever exercise that you do you choose the one that you enjoy to do and as yeah. a teacher it is so important to bring that element of fun yeah. and you know you you get a balance of having fun being challenged um, and also improving yourself physically. And I think, you know, over the years as, as an experienced teacher, you see that those things are really, really important when you're teaching adults. Now, my favorite fitness class to teach is Aqua, purely because I, the, you know, Aqua attracts those older ladies and we have so much fun. So I'm guessing your silver classes are also your favorite. Oh my life, yes. On a Friday, so this is, today is a Friday that we're doing this. And on a Friday morning, I teach a class called Dancing Divas. That's at 9.30 in the morning. And I have a group of ladies um, and they are, they sort of, what's the youngest? Probably, probably my age, 55, up to maybe 65, maybe 65. So this range of ladies, well, they're amazing. They give me joy. We do a warm up and then we do a dance, like either a strictly dance, maybe something um, like a bit of an, a smooth, or we do a bit of a jive or a Charleston, or we do something from a musical. So we might do some Mary Poppins or we did Saturday Night Fever. And they are just, we laugh 
Yeah. We forget what we're doing. We can't remember. We're like, what we do now? <laughs> right, what it's age do you, you need to be to join that? Because I want to sign up, Jeanette. You would absolutely... I want you to come. One, yes, please come over to Leicester and come to that class because you would be in heaven. Heaven. And then I drive, zoom, 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 straight from that class to Age UK and my lovely lovely silver swans oh. and there they are doing ballet so i'm i'm exhausted after the first class but calmed <laughs> by the second class it's and amazing. you're definitely happy it's a friday afternoon then after that lot this yes. morning i usually sleep on a friday afternoon to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> right Jeanette. talking more generally about dance what do you think the other benefits are of dance so you've got a balance between the the physical benefits and the mental benefits um physically as i said before you know you've got your balance you've got your coordination you've got your strength the cardio side of things um from a mental point of view you've got that you've got that also a sort of an element of mindfulness i think in um ballet in particular particular um you can um zone out a little bit you know the music is very beautiful it's classical music um, and I get a lot of people saying that it just takes them away and you know they also say that you know the benefit of going to do something for an hour where they don't have to think about anything else is huge and and in fact that's same for me as a teacher you know yeah. I go and I don't think about anything else when I'm there the time goes quickly I'm totally involved you know I'm not on my phone or anything it's just you're in the moment and I think that is incredible you know I think the combination of music movement yeah people you know they all match up beautifully um but you know physically if you continue to dance over and over and over, you will see those changes in your body. You will see the tone improve. You'll see your core improve. You'll see your posture improve. Um, and your muscle memory kicks in. So you you know, you remember more every time you go. Um, and, and that's huge as well. Yeah, it ticks a lot of boxes. Now, I'm a fitness instructor. I work in gyms. Are there anything fitness-wise that we should be doing to improve our dance? What do you think the fitness secrets are to those strictly professionals? Wow. Um, I mean, the professionals are on another level. You know, they will absolutely be um, adhering to an extremely strict diet. They will be um, continuing to practice day in, day out to avoid injury. Yes. Um, so, you know, that that's sort of on the, the real professional level. On a people wanting to dance to enjoy and to get fit then you just have to you know work with your teacher make sure that you're doing everything correctly a good teacher will always ask you about any um, sort of injuries you have or any um, restrict um, constraints that you have um, and will really um, be concerned about those things for you um, but also it's working within your own capability and understanding your own body and I think it's listening to your body and understanding what you can be capable of and do within the enjoyment of it yeah. you know you don't want to get to the point where you're actually not enjoying it and I think that's the difference with dance as opposed to um, going to the gym maybe or running you know it's more of a um, what's the word holistic thing in terms of you know it's about the enjoyment the relaxation the fun as well as the physical benefits as well and the the thing that i love about dance particularly is the fact there's so many different styles which can be adapted to so many different fitness levels as well exactly you've got a lot of dance out there you know it's not just you know you've got you've got ballet you've got tap dancing tap dancing a great cardio cardio that one is yeah exhausting um you've got ballet you've got tap you've got um sort of dance exercise you know and that would cover your kind of your zumba and yeah. and those sorts of things that incorporate dance moves into more of a workout and then you've got ballroom you've got ballroom you've got latin you've got social dancing you've got line dancing um you've you know there is masses out there something to suit everybody i would say now half my no not half all part all 
the people in the Dolby group, apart from us, chose Jive. Now for Jive, you've got to have a lot of stamina. You know, you, you're using your cardio muscle. Why have all those people chosen Jive? Are they crazy? <laughs> I don't know. I've never had an ultra like that where there's been like a, a full on everybody's up for the jive never it's a jive isn't it yeah it's hard it's it's hard it's like tough on the knees you're, you're on the balls of the feet the whole time your thighs have got to be like super strong um but not only that you've got to have amazing amazing cardio because i mean i get exhausted i do a little bit of jive and i'm like oh i need a rest unbelievable that they've done that in leicester i have to say i've got a 50 50 split Oh, half lovely. doing jive, half Perfect. doing smooth. The funny and thing I, is, when when me and my partner Helen walked into Derby and met you, one of the first things we ever said to you was, "I hope it's not jive." So, what was yes. going through your head? Because you knew it was going to be jive. I think I and I, I ridiculously said to you, didn't I say, "Oh, what sort of dance dance styles would you like?" And the first thing you said, "Not jive." And I, my heart sank. <laughs> I was like, oh dear. <laughs> They've only got one choice now. <laughs> Let's hope they like the American smoothie. Yeah, it's a good job we did. <laughs> now, when it comes to nutrition for dancing, is it, yeah. do you think it's like um, running where you need to have some jelly babies on the side or something like that to keep your energy up? <laughs> you need to have a bar of chocolate at the end. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, on a serious note, um, you know, good healthy eating um, obviously supports any kind of physical fitness. Um, hydration is incredibly important. So yeah. making sure that you hydrate before the class, during the class and after the class. Um, that has a huge impact because, you know, quite often you don't realise how much energy you've used and then you, you know go out and you think, oh, I've got a bit of a headache. Well, I've got a headache. You know, hydration is totally important and essential. Um, you know, a good balanced diet, you know, get those veggies in, get the fruit in, you know, healthy snacks is good. Um, you know, if you were taking it to the next level, you would absolutely need to be working on um, a good nutritional diet. Um, but, you know, for enjoyment's sake, just make sure, you know, support your dancing with a good, healthy lifestyle, make some good, yeah. healthy choices, but balance that with actually having things that you like as well. Which links very good into my next topic, which is, of course, lifestyle. Yeah. Do you think sleep's important or is it all about getting good shoes? What do you think? Okay, both of those things, super important. I love sleeping. <laughs> I, interestingly, the my sleep is so much better when I've taught, after I've taught, you know, I'm, I'm generally exhausted, but it gives yeah. you that lovely deep sleep. What I would recommend to everybody, an absolute discovery, um, is after you've exercised, uh, if you like a bath, not everybody likes a bath, I love a bath. Um, a bath using Epsom salts that are the ones that are support muscle relaxation, those ones, amazing. Put them back in your bath, have a good soak. It really helps with the muscles. And I do that after every time that I teach, um, I would highly recommend it. Um, so that's a really good thing. And that actually is very um, supportive of a good night's sleep. I think when you're physically, you've physically worked out, your sleep actually is better because you're, you're, you're more tired. Um, but obviously getting that amount of sleep that you need and that varies from person to person. Um, so yes, it's, it's that whole, it's the whole of your life. Yeah, it's all of those things. A good diet, um, sensible amount of sleep, taking care of yourself physically after dancing. So keeping yourself warm. So if you've, if you've sweated um, and you know, you're know you tired, then make sure that you are warm, particularly at the moment when it is very yeah. cold. When you leave dancing, you know, I always put my joggers on, put my hoodie on um, and then have my bath because actually that's great for your muscles. So you don't want to sit, go home from, from dancing and then sit and do nothing because you will feel it. If you sit there for sort of half an hour after that, then you go to get up, let me tell you, that will be a workout on its own trying to get out of the chair <laughs> so um yeah take care of yourself in that way shoes super important in life and in dancing yes um yes definitely dancing you've got to have the right shoes for whatever you're doing 
ballet shoes for ballet. If you're doing something like um, any kind of dance fitness type exercise, good supportive dance trainers yeah. are really good. So not just trainers. Trainers tend to have, they're very supportive, but they have a very flat sole. Um, and you don't get great flexibility in your feet. Um, jazz trainers or dance sneakers have a split sole. So they've got sort of the support on the ball of the foot and the heel, and then they just have, um, they have a gap in the middle, if you like. And that allows you to flex and stretch your toe and also use your foot fully. And I would highly recommend jazz sneakers or um, uh, dance trainers um, if you're going to do any kind of um, dance exercise, definitely. Um, in life, yeah. being 55, I struggle with the stilettos now. <laughs> but it is, it's about taking care of your feet. Your feet are, I know this sounds ridiculous, they're really important. Yeah. <laughs> and they're the only pair you've got. So yeah. you need to sort of take care of them. You know, not just your feet, your nails and, you know, make sure they're, you know, well pedicured um but also taking care of you know blisters and anything that come al comes along to make sure that you know they don't get worse and giving yourself a good foot massage really nice or get someone else to do it yeah but even better yes but is there is there something called comfortable dance shoes because so far i've not seen any evidence of this jazz trainers and sneakers are the most comfortable shoes in the world i love them ballroom shoes latin shoes they well yeah they are comfortable they, they've got suede soles they allow flexibility of the foot it's yep. when you try and dance in a, a, a not fit for purpose shoe that then you get into trouble um so always have the right shoe for the right dance exercise that you're doing so all the time that I've been planning my outfit, when I've just been basically looking for the most glitter or sparkle shoe, I'm, I'm going the wrong way on that, aren't I? It needs to be comfort over style. <laughs> but you can, you can combine the two, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm becoming right. an expert at that. <laughs> I'm going to get some comfortable ones and then add the sequins after. I think that's that the way to do exactly it. exactly what you need to bling up the comfy shoes is what you need to do, for sure. <laughs> right, now what I want you to do is to combine all your amazing advice into top three tips, Jeanette, how to get fit dancing. Okay, number one, choose the dance that you love. Number two, find a class that suits you. So don't, you know, so go to different classes, find a teacher that you like, that you get on with, find the music that you love. Um, because choosing to get fit has to be something you enjoy or you'll give it up. Yeah. You will stop. It's like, yeah, you need to really consider finding that thing that you will enjoy doing and almost feel like you're not keeping fit when you are keeping fit. And thirdly, try and combine everything. Try and combine the whole approach. Try and make changes in your diet, make changes in the way that you, you know, your lifestyle um, that will support what you're doing and that will improve your physical fitness you know start walking more walk the stairs don't take the lift walk to work if you can get off the bus two stops earlier and walk the rest of the way um you know try and include other elements of exercise during your week to support what you're doing and you will see the benefit that was more than three. sorry no, thank you <laughs> Now it is nearly Easter, the shops are full of Easter treats. What are you looking forward to most? <laughs> Absolutely everything, because I've given up a lot of things for lunch. Oh, have you? <laughs> oh, it'll be chocolate up... hot crust buns and everything then. Oh, I've given up chocolate, cake, biscuits and sweets, because unfortunately they are my absolute weakness in life, all of those things. But what I convinced myself was that hot cross buns didn't fall into that category. 
Because so, it's bread. I know. They're bread. Absolutely. There you go, Jodie. They are bread. They are bread. So um, my usual rule, you see, look, big story here. The usual rule is that I don't have a hot cross bun until Good Friday, but I've had a hot cross bun nearly every day since the lead began. <laughs> Because I feel like that's my treat in life. <laughs> my mum's so, been. My, go on. I was just going to say, my mum's been telling me about that. You know the reviews they do on hot cross buns on TV. <gasps> She's been yes. telling me about these lemon hot cross buns. Do you fancy those? I do fancy that. Where are they from? Tell she me. She didn't catch that, but I'm, I'm thinking it's an M and S sort of thing. No, it's not M and S. I've been through all the range of oh, M and S hot cross buns. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm right, quite we'll the keep researching together. We'll each of the know when we find the lemon hot cross buns. I can't wait. I literally, nah, that'll be it. I'll be straight off here and straight on the Google. <laughs> but so, yeah, chocolate is going to be. <laughs> right, chocolate. Can't wait. Yeah. So how can people find more information about you? How can they get involved with Ultra? Tell us the details. Okay, so Ultra, there's um, the website, www.ultraballroom.co.uk. Um, there's Ultra events, which incorporate um, the Ultra White Collar Boxing and the MMA and the comedy. So there's a, a range of things depending on what you, you know what you like doing. Um, it would be great to get you involved next year. Um, at the end of this year, November, there's another event then. Um, the dance, you can, if you're near to Leicester, in Leicester, you can get in touch with me through my website, www.gb-dance.co.uk. Um, or the email is the same, but info at the beginning. Um, yes, just to have a look on Facebook. I'm on there as well. I'm on Instagram. Um, I'd love a follow. That would be very nice. And if you are in Leicester, come along to one of my classes. I would love to see you there. It would be really lovely. Um, but yes, Ultra Ballroom does so much good. Ultra events, £28 million for Cancer Research UK. It's an amazing thing. Um, please go ahead and join. Now, I'll also give people an option. If you live in Aberystwyth or somewhere far, far away where there's no no ultra events there, oh. I've seen you do something called the the Virtual Village Hall. Yes, I Isn't have. Great? So the, the Virtual Village Hall um, was something that um, the Royal Voluntary Service created um, in lockdown. So what they wanted to do was create all of those things that you would go to a village hall and do, um, but um, have it in a virtual sense. So they still do it now, they continue with it now. You can go and do craft, you can go and do dance, you can do um, Pilates, all sorts of things on the virtual village hall. Um, and they've actually asked me to do something quite interesting coming up with a seated um, dance class. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Wow. Um, but there's lots and lots of different things on there. Um, there's some yeah, great I'm dance classes with you, isn't there? Yeah, I have done a couple of dance classes. <laughs> Are they still on YouTube? Yeah, I found them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did a Charleston class and I think like a like a just Hollywood, time Hollywood class. one I saw. Sorry? A Hollywood one I saw. That's the Holly yes, the Hollywood one. Yes. And that was really lovely as well. You know, that's something different and um something actually that I'm gonna be doing more of in the future as well. So that's if exciting. you connect with the village hall I don't know the website off the top of my head, but if you look up Virtual Village Hall, um, you will find it. Yeah. Great. Now, we, I can't not talk to you and not plug my uh, sponsorship page, can oh. I? So below in the comments are, is my online sponsorship for Cancer Research UK. Uh, just to tell you quickly how I met Jeanette again, um, me and my friend Helen, we were on a spa weekend watching Strictly and she said those ultimate words, wouldn't it be good if we could do that? Little yeah. Google search, we found ultra events and eight weeks of free training. All you need to do is raise some money for Cancer Research UK, just a little bit, uh, sell some tickets for people to come along and see you and you get eight weeks free professional training not only with Jeanette but we've also got Joe so we've got two dance teachers not just one <laughs> um, and then also 
we mentioned earlier Katie, who's been amazing help ah. helping us support, not only support for Cancer Research UK, but giving us more information about it as well. Like you said, most people have been touched by it, but generally, you know, they don't realise all the amazing work behind the scenes, what Cancer Research UK. So it is great to get involved with that. And community wise, I've met amazing people like Jeanette. So thank you so much for everything. It's my absolute pleasure. Like I say, it's it's so joyful. It's not just about the dance teaching. It is about the people. It's like people yeah. like yourselves um, that you make connections with and then you stay in touch with, which is just incredible. Friendships are born out of it. Relationships are born out of it. All sorts of things. It's just such a great feel good thing to do but you're not just doing it for yourself you are changing the lives of people in the future which is so important sponsor jody please thank you thank you so much <laughs> great right well i will see you very soon my dear <laughs> i cannot wait i cannot wait <laughs> great thank you very much jeanette thank you it's my pleasure thank you for asking me Please remember to like, give me a comment, share with your friends and of course subscribe to my channel. Thank you.